Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, in whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord.
came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west to eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Please be seated. <clears throat> they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. The season of Advent is my favorite season to experience liturgically imagery, the feeling, the countercultural vibe, here in Christ Chapel, is set up askew. When I was imagining the seminarian's students preaching yesterday, and two of them were preaching in Good Shepherd, my parish, and as I anticipated today, I realized that Advent's a lot. Advent's a lot, I think because there's a lot to explain. What was the furniture of the ancient imagination is no longer ours. So first we have to get it and then translate. And usually explaining is not a great thing to do in sermons. So you have to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> what, for example, what to make of all this scripture about the end? Jesus in different gospels says the end is soon. But the end is not yet. Don't worry about the end, but you can be sure it's coming, and you better be ready. <laughs> Why is this good news? For it surely was. Is the end of which Jesus speaks the rapture of Tim LaHaye, or the demise of the earth from global warming, or something different entirely? Today we read the vision of the prophet Isaiah. A wish fulfillment fantasy, if there ever was one. Everyone wanting to go to Mount Zion. The nations streaming to Jerusalem. Everyone wants to learn the law. The Lord shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. We Christians read this in Advent because it describes an aspect of the Messianic age to be fulfilled in Jesus. And yet, could it still seem in our modern era to be a distracting, illusory fantasy? It is possible to explain a lot of this, from the history of religion, the development of theological thinking, liturgical theology, eschatological images like this one from the prophets were reread in the Second Temple period, in a time of extreme suffering and terrible injustice. God's righteous judgment was projected into the future at the end. If you were denied your traditions and your temple was going to be ruined, the speeding up of the apocalyptic clock was good news. Early Jesus believers took this over 
And so it came to pass what I learned long ago. Apocalyptic is the mother of Christian theology. We don't live in this world anymore, and it requires a lot of orientation, or even immersion. So what about these well-known words of the prophet Isaiah today? Were they fulfilled? Maybe it happened when the Magi from the East brought their gifts to Jesus' birth, the nations streaming to worship the Jewish Savior. Maybe it happened when Paul collected the offering for the church in Jerusalem for all the nations. And maybe, probably, it's still to be realized, this vision, hanging out there, an ideal that's even adopted by secular, popular, political culture. Words quoted, I think, by every single president, Republic, Republican and Democrat, inscribed in the United Nations. What about this vision in Isaiah? Well, this is what I've come to know after all my years of exploring and explaining Advent. Even though judgment is a bad word in our live and let live society, our culture of emotional affirmation, really judgment is an essential pillar of our faith. God will judge the nations, and God will judge us, and this is good news. Because if God doesn't, what is the point of affirming God's righteousness over and over again? in face of its evident unrealization. Justice needs judgment. Resurrection needs judgment. Repentance and renewal of life needs judgment. Judgment is an essential element of Isaiah's vision of Zion. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Think about that transformation of one tool of destruction to a tool of healing. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That judgment is essential has been taught to me by the early Christians. And people struggling in regimes of injustice have also taught me the necessity of God's judgment and our imagination of it coming to pass. And this insistent Christian tradition of Advent keeps teaching me that. So contemplate, I invite you to contemplate judgment this Advent season, and its sister, justice. May Isaiah's vision motivate us to work for just justice, to make it happen so that the nations give up their drones and plow the soil and feed the world, as the presidents and the UN exhort and uphold us. And may it motivate us to work for justice, and may faith in God's ultimate justice free us, free us to try and fall short, and to try and fail and try again. Mm -hmm. To try and try and try until Christ comes again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Good Lord, give us grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. Good Lord, and to all that people will give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek hearts and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Good Lord, we receive thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right action for the welfare and peace of the world. Good Lord, open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards. Of thy bounty. Good Lord, and we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Barbara Grisby, Madeline and Ben, Robert Zeisman, Dan, Grayson, and Elliot, and all those who in transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need sickness, or any other adversity. Good Lord, we give thee, O Lord, humble and hearty thanks for the birth of Marlo Rose Wilder and all the blessings of this life, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Good Lord, we give thee thanks for the students of our seminary, beseeching thee to bestow thy blessing upon Leslie Wilson and Linda Gardner, and all those who study in this place. Good Lord, and we also give thee thanks to the staff, faculty, and administration of our seminary beseeching thee to bestow thy gifts upon Ty Walters and all those who wait in this place. Good Lord, and we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants who departed in this life, thy faith and fear, especially Judy Brown, Michael Eisenstadt, and Caitlin Bigley. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good example of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Good Lord, <laughs> grant these our prayers to the Father for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and God the word in you, by the Lord we have done, and by the Lord we have not done. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry that we come to your friends. For the sake of that Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and free us, that we may be loved by the Lord and walk in our grace. The glory of God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repent, repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, O ye that travail and are heavy laden and I will refresh you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs> Thank you. 
All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And an institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants be celebrated and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Prayer after communion is on page 339. Let us pray. Almighty and ever perfect God, we must have the identity of the Lord God has to us in these holy mysteries for the spiritual beauty of the most precious body and blood of the blessed Son of our Savior Jesus Christ, and as well to share our spirit body and the favor and goodness of the Lord of us. And then I hear the members of the Lord, the mystical body of our Son, the blessed one of the all faithful people, and are also heirs of the hope of the everlasting kingdom. And we only receive to the Lord of the Father, so consistent of us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.